how GANs work is that, uh, or the goal of a GAN rather, is to be able to generate new samples of something. Uh, it's become very popular lately because it can generate a bunch of cool things. Uh, if you looked at research papers or news about uh, machine learning or deep learning specifically, you'll probably see something about GANs. How they work is that they have a generative part and a discriminative part. And uh, here's where the adversarial comes into place because the generative part keeps trying to produce as realistic samples as possible, uh, let's say images. So it tries to make the images as real as possible. And then you have the discriminator, which looks at these images and tries to say if they're false or real. And this way, if you manage to balance these two correctly, you can have two parts of your model, which keeps competing against each other to keep getting better and better and better. So it's a really cool technique and it essentially forces your generative part to learn a distribution of your data set. Uh, and what that means is that when it learns the distribution of your data set, you can send in new kind of values to it to generate completely new samples, completely new images, which before were not part of your original data set. And how the generative part in itself works is that it takes just when training, it takes a random random numbers. In our case, we're going to use 100 random numbers. Uh, and based on these 100 random numbers, it's going to start generating images. Very common things to do is to take uh, uh, the, the random numbers which would create one person and then the random, random numbers which create another one and you mix those two and you have a merge of the two different images of people. So that's some of the cool things which you can do with a GAN. Uh, and the data which we'll be training on is just like before and NIST as well, again. So we'll try to generate something which looks a lot like handwritten digits, hopefully. But let's start with the generative part. So as I mentioned, we want a random uh, component, a random data component. And I'll change the shape to it, to the 100 I mentioned before. So we have to have 100 random inter integers or doubles even getting outputted from it. Then we need the uh, neural network part. And it's going to be a fairly small one. We just need two dense components, one with 128 neurons, and a second one with 784. So 128 is just a good number. Uh, 784 comes from uh, how large the MNIST data set is, if you remember from the image classification. And to make this a little bit more interesting, we'll also reshape this back uh, so it looks like an image. Currently, it just looks like random noise, though, since that's literally what it is. Uh, but it'll get better. And that's the generated part. After we have the generated part, we uh, need something to train against. So we'll load in the same MNIST data set as we did before. and reshape it again. All right, so now we have a generated part or a generated image and a real image. The next part is going to build the discriminator. But before we build the discriminator, we need to decide which one of these is actually going into discriminator. And there are a few ways to do this, but the way we're going to do it is use a switch component. And what this component does is that it switches back and forth between uh, the first input and the second input. And this way we can feed the discriminator uh, first the, uh, the regenerated image, then the real image, then generated and back and forth and back and forth. And that way uh, start 
continuously feed the uh, discriminator with the images from both uh, from both different outputs. So for the discriminator part itself, it's going to be fairly simple as well. We just need one more dense component, 128 here as well, just like before. And then just an output component, uh, which is also a dense component. But this one has only one neuron and uh, no activation function either. And the reason for that is we just wanted to output a single value. Uh, it's either going to be true or false. Uh, so a one or a zero. And when all of that is set up, again, we just need the training component to tie it all together. As soon as it starts loading, uh, it gives an error and that's because we don't have the correct real data here. So I'll just go and change this to the actual real data data set. There we go. Uh, then here there's a bunch of settings as well. I'm going to increase the epochs a bit uh, and increase the, increase the batch size. But everything else should be good as it, as it is. Okay, and then this one is already ready to start training. So I'll start training this one and uh, we'll get into a very similar screen as we did with the other ones. I usually like looking at samples first because that's the one which I think is most interesting. we we'll start here. There we go. And here we'll soon start seeing how it goes from just this random noise to something which with some imagination you can imagine looks like an eight or a three. Uh, and then we'll keep improving uh, and changing. Uh, other things we can look at is the generator loss. Uh, and uh, uh, the discriminator loss. And these two are very interesting to look at um, and uh, especially going back and forth like this because there is no real goal of getting any of the losses as low as possible. The thing you want to keep in mind here is to make sure that they stay balanced. So they keep that no one outperforms the other one because then you're going to get stuck in a local minima. Uh, so you want them both to st keep improving at about the same rate uh, and keep changing equally. Finally, we have a data distribution where you can see uh, the red ones are the generated ones and the blue dots are the real images. And the goal here is to have the uh, generated images and the real images have about the same distribution. Just like before, we can go in and look at everything. Gradients here again is great for debugging. And I don't think we'll get a complete model here. Um, it takes quite a while uh, for it to finish training, but we could see a little bit earlier how it started to get uh, better. That's the uh, GAN. If you have any questions, troubles or suggestions, please visit our forum at forum.perceptlabs.com or reach out to me directly at our Stack channel.